We'll begin in three minutes. Use this time to quiet your spirit and prepare to meet Jesus in this time of prayer and reflection. Welcome. We are Holy Cross. We gather each week to inspire and encourage one another. This week is known as Holy Week in the Church, but I don't think the people who lived through it thought of it as particularly holy. They probably thought of it as a week of sorrow and loss, uncertainty and fear, a lot like how we're feeling right now. This week as we gather and lament together, we want to share a few scriptures and stories from the final week in the life of Jesus. And along with the time for lament, we've included a time for confession as well. Savior of the world, what have we done to deserve this? And what have we done to deserve you? Strung up between criminals, cursed and spat upon, you wait for death and look for us. For us whose sins have crucified you to the mystery undeserved scuff suffering. Suffering, you bring the deeper mystery of unmerited love. Forgive us for not knowing what we have done open our eyes to what we are doing now as through wood and nails you disempower our depravity and transform us by your grace amen reading from Exodus 16. Why didn't God just let us die in comfort in Egypt, where we had lamb stew and all the bread we could eat? You've brought us out into this wilderness to starve us to death, the whole company of Israel. We are 
are in the wilderness, a wilderness where fear stalks us, answers elude us, where bread tastes like stone, and we wander, wondering what the next step could be. We're not even sure how we got here. And yet you call us, call us to be still, to listen, to sit in this wilderness. Cry and scream and confess, see and name and resist the other gods before us and around us. And you call us to believe that here in this wilderness, here in this place, there is also grace. I'd like to invite you now into a time of confession. We'll be led through this time by the stories and confessions of those who have gone before us on this journey. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. 
for that which had not been told them that they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he has wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercessions for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. God who sees us and knows us and is with us. We confess that often we aren't who we think we are or say we are. We aren't who we want to be, who you call us to be. Forgive us. Lord, have mercy. A reading from Hebrews. This is a covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have the confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us conquer how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, Word of Life. God who only wants good for us. 
We confess that we are often afraid to do the right thing when it is the hard thing, when it doesn't seem like the smart thing or in our best interests. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. We invite you to spend a moment in silent confession. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Hear these words of assurance. When we confess our sins, Jesus says, God forgive them, even from the cross, and stands beside us with the love that will never let us go. 
May we live in gratitude for our second chances and daily ask ourselves, what is it that I'm going to do today with this one wild and precious life? I invite you now into a time for lament. As we lament during this holy week, we remember how a little less than a week ago, Jesus rode on the back of a colt right into the pain and suffering of the world. And then he walked through the streets of our pain and fear and uncertainty and cried out to God right in the middle of it, not with platitudes or easy answers, but with deep laments for the hurts and losses and sorrows of us all. Jesus knows our grief. He is right there with us through our pain. It turns out that the Christmas message is also the Easter message. Jesus is God with us. Let us pray. We read in Luke 19 that as Jesus came into the city, he wept over it. And we too are weeping over so many cities in the world, so many places in the world close to us and far away where people are suffering and dying, where the hurt goes on and on. We pray especially for the most vulnerable among us in all the cities all over the world. We weep for the ones with the least power, privilege, wealth, and status because they are the ones who always suffer first, the most, and for the longest amount of time. As we name these places and people, we pray, Lamb of God, have mercy, have mercy. So there it is, the ugly shape of beautiful wood, rough hewn by human hands. Lord, where are you now? And there it is, a tight shut tomb, a borrowed grave, sealed with stone and silence. Lord, where are you now? And there it is, your broken body, shrouded in linen, dressed in darkness. Lord, where are you now? And somewhere stand your people, crying through, t though tired of crying, their eyes sore and bloodshot. They will not sleep tonight. Lord, where are you now? And out in the streets, the children have stopped their playing. The sound of music has gone sour. Even the unlikely people fidget and wonder. Lord, where are you now? And here are we, saying, if only, murmuring, surely not, counting the cost for once of our carelessness and our lovelessness and our sin. Trying so vainly to gain all, we've bartered you away in the transaction. We have lost the one who found us. With the Peters and Marys of all time, we wait, for only you can tell whether we are worth rising for. Amen. At the final meal, Jesus confronted the betrayal of one of his closest friends. We come to you now, God, lamenting all the betrayal we are facing in this moment. From governments, corporations, religious leaders, family, friends, even the betrayal we feel from our own bodies. Lamb of God, have mercy, have mercy. What's wrong? 
What's right? Hard to see without sight. Blindly, we come to you. Forgive us, forgive us. We know not what we do. Be with us. Not what we do. Be with us, be with us. We don't know what to do. We don't know what. It was on the Friday that they ended it all. Of course, they didn't do it one by one. They weren't brave enough. All the stones at the at the one time, or no stones thrown at all. They did it in crowds, in crowds where you can feel safe and lose yourself and shout things. You would never shout on your own and do things. You would never do if you felt the camera was watching you. It was a crowd in the church that did it, a crowd in the silver services that did it, a crowd in the street that did it, a crowd on the hill that did it. He said, and he said nothing. He took those insults, the bruises, the split on the face, the thongs on the back, the curses in the ears. He took the slight of his friends turning away, running away, and he said nothing. He, he let them do the worst until the worst was done. As on, on Friday, they ended it all and would have finished themselves had he, had he not cried, Father, forgive them, and begin the re- revolution. From the cross, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We ask the same question. Where are you, God? What are you doing? Why have you forsaken us? We cry out for everyone who feels abandoned, undone, without hope. Lamb of God, have mercy. Have mercy. When it was almost over, Jesus spoke two simple words from the cross. I thirst. Jesus understood so clearly what it was like to want and need help when help doesn't come. We lament for those all around us in this time, for those known and unknown to us who cry out, I thirst, I can't breathe, I'm hungry, I'm lonely, I'm scared, I'm dying. Lamb of God, have mercy, have mercy.
A reading from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue stricks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. 
Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the afflicted or of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. For you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All of the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all of the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go to the, down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 